Do you know what Ed Gein said about women? Ed Gein, maitre d' at Canal Bar? No. Serial killer, Wisconsin in the 50s. And what did Ed say? He said, when I see a pretty girl walking down the street, I think two things. One part of me wants to take her out and talk to her, be real nice and sweet and treat her right. And what the other part of him think? <laughs> what her head would look like on a stick. Horror is more than just spooky ghosts, monsters, and body count slashers. There's a seedy underbelly of horror that delves more into the world of true crime, depicting kidnappers, serial killers, and worse. They feel more true to the real-life monsters like Ted Bundy, Ed Gein, and Jeffrey Dahmer, which to most audiences can be a little disturbing, but for people that are into true crime stuff, can be very fascinating. This type of film goes back as far back to the likes of Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Silence of the Lambs, all of which have been influenced in some way by the real-life murders of Wisconsin serial killer Ed Gein. There are, of course, other examples of films of this ilk, like William Lustig's Maniac, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, and a 2012 film that I feel like really captures the vibe of both of these films in a truly disturbing way. This is Scott Shermer's Found. What if you were to find out that someone very close and dear to you, like a best friend, a member of your family, say, your older brother, is the town serial killer? Well, that's what this film deals in, and it's pretty fucked up in its execution of it. Marty is a kid that lives the typical middle North American life. He deals with an asshole bully at school, his parents are kind of dysfunctional, but he manages to find an escape and refuge whenever he can in the world of horror movies. Which is something that I think many of us can relate to, particularly anyone that frequents this channel. Most of us have either escaped into fantasy books, maybe video games, or horror films like Marty does. We all have that interest that helps put us into a better mindset, better than anything else does. Though most of us don't find a severed head in our older brother's bowling bag. See, Marty felt like he could really connect with Steve, his older brother. He doesn't really get along with mom and dad, and besides a casual buddy, not really a whole lot popular at school either. He's always borrowing horror flicks from his bro. It's sort of the way they bond, and sometimes Steve even recommends movies to Marty. Hey, while you're gone, can I go through your movie collection? David's been in the night tonight, and I was wondering if I could watch Hellraiser again. All right, but only because you asked this time. Be careful with my shit. I will. If you like Hellraiser, watch Nightbreed. It's Clive Barker too, bunch of freaky monsters running around in a graveyard. You'll like it. This is the Steve I miss. Normal Steve. But now knowing what Steve is, everything is crumbling down around Marty. He's finding it hard to connect with the one friend he has at school. He's nervous around his entire family, especially his brother and he's even finding it exceedingly difficult to enjoy his favorite kinds of movies because he keeps expecting the killer to be revealed as Steve. Especially in one instance regarding a film called Headless, which Steve seems to be hoarding from the local video store. It's a graphic, almost bordering on snuff slasher film where the killer decapitates his victims and proceeds to have a bit of the old in-out, in-out with the heads. Headless is a short film created just for found, and it's one of my favorite elements in the movie on a purely aesthetic standpoint. Marty also watches a movie with his buddy called Deep Dwellers, which is a wonderful little throwback to what appears to be Don Dolor flicks like Galaxy Invader and Night Beast. Both of these were also shot prior to Found's principal photography. I love this kind of shit. I love fake movies that only exist within the movie you're watching. 
loved it since Angels with Filthy Souls and Home Alone, to all the made-up campy fake B-monster movies in popcorn. Just something super fun and creative about it. You know, if it wasn't for the older brother being a decapitation maniac killer, Found could actually be a nice little slice-of-life film about two brothers and a dysfunctional family that have each other, and horror films. But this is not a fairy tale world. No, I'm serious! I'm tired of people pushing me around! Why don't they get in trouble? Why don't they get smacked? You guys are assholes! You don't care about me! Don't you hit him again! You need to shut your mouth! No! Marty's been through enough! Leave him alone! I don't recall asking you a goddamn thing! Eventually, things take an even heavier turn. Steve is kicked out of the house, and anxiety runs high in Marty as he worries if Steve will violently retaliate against his own family. Now, I don't want to spoil too much, because I feel like if you've never seen this one, and you're into these kind of movies, you really do need to experience it for yourself. And I gotta say, the third act in this film is shocking as all shit. Things get fucking nasty. This is the type of film that when done right, it leaves you with an uncomfortable feeling. Much like Maniac or Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, you kind of feel like you might need a shower and that you should maybe check your locks. I feel like with the massive popularity of the black phone, which in itself has a very similar grimy, grounded feel, I strongly recommend checking out Found if you've yet to come across it. Found was based on a novel of the same name from 2004 from author Todd Rigney. And remember Headless? Thanks to Found, the movie version that is, Headless got its own actual spin-off movie in 2015. Found is truly the gift that keeps on giving. Scott Shermer is fast becoming one of my favorite horror directors of the 2010s. Another film of his that I was greatly impressed with is a movie called Plank Face from 2016, which was brought to my attention by this handsome fuck. Aw, oh, hell, man. You don't gotta thank me for that. I'm just glad that you liked it as much as I did. And as long as we cover it Sunday together, it's all good. Don't worry about it. And now if you'll excuse me, I have to take care of this bug problem. Elvira's Horror Hunt gave Found Best Film, Best Director, and Best Actor in 2012. The Best Actor Award went to the killer older brother Steve, played by Ethan Philbeck. Which is cool on his part because it seems to be his only actual acting credit. Also, come to think of it, he kind of reminds me of somebody just, just a little bit. Pete, just don't do it, okay? Oh, God damn it. Fine. Found is also one of the most recent movies to be refused a rating in Australia. It took two edits to finally bring it to an R18 Plus to be released there. A modern video nasty, if there ever was one. One of the main reasons why this film kept getting an X rating, too, is because there appears to be a scene in which there's full frontal erect male nudity. But it's actually a prosthetic dick created by the Clockwork Creature Company. And I ain't giving you any context. Watch the movie, bitch! <laughs> 